Hi everyone, my name is Phil and welcome to Phil Does 3D. I'm a multimedia and 3D artist and I stream live on Twitch on Mondays and Tuesdays at 5pm Pacific Time in the US, which is 11am in Australia or 1am if you're in the UK. Remember if you miss the live streams, you can catch up with the premiere event streams, which are on a Friday and Saturday at 2pm Pacific Time in the US, which is 8am in Australia or 10pm if you're in the UK. And whoop to you as well, Smurfberry Barbecue. Good to see you, buddy. Okay, so how are we going to get this thing finished today? The modeling stage, at least, of our Temple of the Winds that we're doing in 3D Studio Max. We're going to try. We are going to try. We'll do our best. Okay. So, uh, this is what we're working on. And we are just going through it now to make sure everything is UV mapped before we start doing some texturing in Substance Painter and Mari. Smurfery says, I suggest using modeling software. <laughs> That's a good suggestion, Smurfery. Yeah, I would never have thought of that. Using some modeling software to do some 3D modeling. Wow. You I like the way you think. You think outside of the box, Smurfery. Way outside of the box. Okay, Smurfberry suggestion aside. Um, remember, guys and girls, if you've got any questions, please feel free to pop into chat and ask me. Uh, if you just want to pop in and say hello, like Smurfberry, then that's always welcome. But if uh, all you want to do is watch, then that's completely fine. I will never hassle anyone that just wants to watch. Sniper Girl, good to see you, Sniper Girl. How are you? Uh, Smurfberry says, that's because I'm not a cat. If I was a cat, I would not be able to think outside of a box. <laughs> You're talking about Schroding Schrodinger's cat? I think that's what you're referring to. I could be wrong. <laughs> it's good to see you though, Smurfberry and Sniper Girl. It's great to see you too. I hope you're well. Uh, Sniper Girl says he lies, have to interact or face the ban hammer. <laughs> and then Smurfberry says, no, cats just love boxes. Oh, okay. They do. They do love boxes. I remember my little kitten, or my cat, you know, I've spoken about her before. She used to love to climb into boxes and, and <laughs> she was really funny. She loved being chased around the apartment, like, you know, play, playing, but she'd try and hide. And the way she would hide, I have like a, um, uh, an antique wooden, I don't know what you call it, <laughs> thing that sits about that far off the ground on legs. So, but, so she'd just stick half her body underneath of that. So her legs were still sticking out, but her head was covered by the, uh, the cabinet. And uh, that, she thought that was her way of hiding. No one could see her, so long as her head was covered up. It was so funny. <laughs> Especially cats named Maru. Oh, okay. If I can't see you, that's right. <laughs> Sniper Girl says, um, doing well, working on the van still, looking up sculpting tutorials on vegetation. Excuse me, two sex. I uh, want to sculpt out leaves, grass, flowers and such to show that I can do it if needed without materials. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm well. I'm still getting over this bit of a cough. And in fact, what I'm going to do is pop another one of my lozenges here that I used yesterday. So excuse me for talking while I'm sucking on this. Um, Smurfberry says, you ever get some good, good wines for that sign? Are you talking to me or to Sniper Girl? Um, I'm just, um, Sniper Girl, okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to think. Sniper Girl wants to sculpt up some vegetation. I'm assuming she's going to do it in ZBrush. Sniper Girl says, uh, yes, there's a procedural asset pack that was free for the month uh, that has vines. Oh, okay, going to use that for sculpting from it. Okay, cool. Yeah, the, the, those brush packs you can get for ZBrush, they're really, really cool. Um, I'm actually going to be using one when we do some distressing on our stairs here. When we jump into ZBrush, I'll use uh, a brush pack that I didn't create, that I purchased, just to do a little bit of distressing. But you can get free ones as well. So ZBrush is very good for that. One tick in ZBrush's favour. 10,000 ticks against, but one tick in favour of. <laughs> what are you saying, Smurfberry Barbecue? Phil has good vines. 
Sniper Girl says, well, going to use my own model, this grips. Oh, okay. And Legmog, good to see you, Legmog. How are you? Just got back from gym. Uh, Legmog says, it looks like Sniper Girl is wiggling into your Eon View assets racket, Phil. I was actually going to suggest to um, Sniper Girl that if she wanted to try Eon View, she should, because that's what they do. It's, it's environmentals, 3D modeling. But I think she wants to do it in ZBrush. Uh, and you can download a free version of, um, of Eon View, of course. So it's an option if you want to think about it, Sniper Girl. And you can actually, they've gone, to, they've gone to a subscription model as well. So if you do want to use their software, you don't have to spend what, what it used to be 1500 US dollars to buy it. You can rent it now month by month for as long as you need. But it's good to see you, Legmog. Are you still doing the gym? Is that still a thing? I hope it's still a thing. I hope you're well. Sniper Girl says, uh, okay, I'll look into doing it. Yeah, do. Um, again, I'll just pull up the browser just for people that might not be familiar with what I'm talking about. Again, the usual spiel, guys and girls. If you don't know who I am or what I do, go to phildoes3d.com. You can find out about me there. Um, but we are looking for Eon View. So this is the software I'm talking about, Eon VUE. This is what I use to do um, all my environment work for the studio. It does environments really nicely. It's all it does pretty much, <laughs> but it does a good job of it. Um, they do have an educational version as well that you can download. But you've got three versions, Creator, Professional and Enterprise with three different price structures depending on which one you want. Cheapest one, of course, is Creator, which will probably get the job done for 90% of you guys and girls. Um, the professional one, sorry, the Enterprise, that integrates into 3D software like Maya and Max. Um, but you don't need to do that. You can use the Creator version, which has a standalone program, which you guys have seen me using before, which is that one there. Uh, and yeah, um, you can download a, uh, a demo version of it, or I think, um, I'm pretty sure you can. I don't know what restrictions there are in the demo version, but yeah, and these are the monthly charges for the different um, different versions. Everybody's going subscription nowadays. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I can recommend it. It does a beautiful job if you're doing uh, environment work. One of the best. Um, there's another one called, I think, World Creator or something along those, PlanetSide Software. They do uh, environment modeling software as 3D stuff as well, but I, I prefer Eon View. The interface to me is just a bit easier to use. Um, the PlanetSide Software software uh, uses a lot of nodes and stuff and it can get a bit confusing. Legmog says, not right now. I've had some uh, ruddy cold infection, cough thing for like two weeks. You and me both. I was talking to Galen was in the chat yesterday and he's got a head cold. I've got a head cold, but that's because I came back from the, the mine. You know, those temperature differences between inland Australia and Melbourne, the coast, that gave me a cold. But everybody seems to be sick at the moment. So I feel your pain, Legmog. <laughs> so if I mute my mic, that's because I'm coughing and I don't want to cough into the mic. And I have to remember to unmute it, so you must tell me if I forget. <laughs> it's happened before. And Snapper says that's shiny. Sniper Girl says, but yeah, want to avoid using textures from third-party sites just for the sake of uh, showing that I can do it without. Well, that's fair enough. Put Set yourself a challenge, and that's a good thing to do. Uh, Legmog says, dang, what was the name of the View Asset Store? Oh, Cornucopia 3D. The name's on the tip of my tongue, but I can't recall it. Yeah, it was Cornucopia 3D, which uh, is is still down. I'm, I'm a, um, a broker. They broker my work. I sell on Cornucopia, or I used to. I was a, I used to sell on there for like for the past seven years until they closed it down after their hack. It's supposed to maybe supposed to maybe be coming back, according to what I've heard from Eon. It's taking a very long time. It's been down for over a year now, so... Very annoying. <laughs> uh, Sniper Girl says there's a ton of environmental art positions out currently. I'm sure there are. There's always a lot of people. If you, if you want to be an environment artist, there's always work. Same for animation. There's always work for animation as well. 
few areas that are in demand. Uh, and particularly if you, um, oh, there we go. You probably can't see it, but it says, have you tried our pre-trials down here in the corner? Uh, you click that and I'm sure it'll take you to, well, they want you to enter your email, of course. Um, a technical artist as well. There's always work for those because um, it's a little bit more complicated a job than just uh, an art role or just a programming role. Sniper Girl says, I was thinking of getting World Machine. Yeah, World Machine is good. Uh, works well with Unreal, it certainly does. It works well with Vue as well. To the point where I figured, for me personally, I think unless you're a studio with easy access to render farms, it's just not a practical solution for one dude with a single PC. <laughs> unless I want to find a way to freeze time while it renders. Now, I'm assuming you're talking about Eon View here, because one of the um, one of the criticisms of View is it takes a long time to render. Now that is true. Oh, pardon me, I'm choking on my lozenger. It can take a long time to render. Now, when we did the renders for the um, Baroque Terrace, the very first streams I did, I showed you guys a way to speed that up by cheating and using a background image. And that'll speed it up dramatically. So there are things, tip, tip, there are tricks you can use. Pardon me. Sorry about that. There are tricks you can use to speed the render up. So, but you are right. But, but you have to keep in mind too, look at how much vegetation and stuff is being rendered. All these blades of grass, I mean. <laughs> that lolly went down the wrong way. Well, lozenger, no lolly. Um, there's all these blades of grass, all of these trees. That's a lot of geometry for any 3D software to actually have to to calculate when it's doing a render. So don't be so hard on Eon View. I know that they, they cop a lot of crap, that their stuff is slow, um, but they it's having to take in a lot of stuff to render out an image for you, so. That's the one leg mock says, yep. <laughs> I do feel like I'm dying, Smurfberry. Wow. <laughs> Sniper Girl says, uh, isn't there a way to rent a render farm? Yes, there is. Saw an advertisement on ArtStation. Not sure how long it takes. Yes, you can rent space on a server. You can rent um, time on a render farm online. You can do that. Yep. There's a, quite a few different companies around that you can uh, rent through. Uh, Legmog says, see, view takes so long to render. Just the thought of it causes Phil to choke. <laughs> Smurfberry says, uh, yeah, there are cloud render farms you can use like Yellow Dog. Sniper Girl says, yeah, those are the same, some of the high poly meshes. And Legmog says, yeah, that specific scene you have on the screen now, I bet that frame took like 20 plus hours to render. <laughs> I don't know what machine was that they were using they were rendering it on, but mm, that is a lot of stuff to, 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 for you to be rendering in. Uh, and that's quite a large image because I'm using a 4K screen, so they rendered it out at least 4K, I'm assuming. But it is good software, look. Seriously, it is good. I use it all the time. Um, you can you can use your standard 3D programs. Like if you're a V-Ray person, like I, I use V-Ray as well. You can use multi-scatter and all that sort of stuff. Carbon scatter, I think it's called as well, to do your environment, trees and grass and all that sort of thing. But when it comes to actually creating a full-on large landscape, and let's look at this image as an example, where you maybe want to fly through it, uh, nothing really handles that as well as Vue does. Your 3D software will start to choke. Even you, even if you proxy, you use proxies uh, to to load the geometry in. It's, it's still going to have a problem. A normal 3D software is still going to have a problem with that much poly count because this scene, you, you'd be looking at billions upon billions of polygons with all these trees and stuff. <clears throat> uh, Legmog says, "God have mercy on your soul if you want a 20 second animation from you." in a similar quality to that image. <clears throat> I don't actually do animations in Vue. Uh, I generally use Vue to do um, stills. <clears throat> yeah, I haven't done a lot of animation in Vue. If I'm doing animation work, <clears throat> if I'm doing animation work for the studio, we generally use V-Ray <laughs> in Mac, so. Uh, but I'm not saying it can't do it, but you might be right, could take a while. Unless you've got a good render farm or a lot of machines you can bring in. 
And they do give you access to five render machines as part of the software. So when you rent the software, buy the software, use the software, they give you five what they call render cows, which means you can use five other machines in your network to render out the image. And that's free. So um, <clears throat> a lot of 3D software won't even give you one. <laughs> V-Ray do, but um, I don't know that Max does anymore. They used to, but I don't think I do anymore. With the Arnold renderer, I'm not sure if that's um, distributed or not, because uh, I don't use it. Snappy Girl says to Legmog, wouldn't doubt it. Hopefully they ended up doing lots. <laughs> Smurfberry says you need an I you need an ILM for that. Legmog says Bue gives me the same sense of hopelessness as RealFlow, aka to get the, that good quality stuff, you'd best have a ton of computing power. <coughs> You were talking about uh, uh, again. Um, is is real flow the um, the fluid simulation leg mob? Is that what you're talking about? I think that's what real flow is. Uh, um, yeah. Are you talking about fluid simulation? Um, Sniper girl says, "Did you guys hear that Alchemist is out? Open beta? No, I did not hear. I'm keen to check it out. That's uh, Algorithmic's new software program thingy." I'm keen to check it out because it did, did look very cool. Um, maybe a little bit less keen now that Adobe have bought Algorithmic, but anyway. Uh, Legmark says, like real flow can easily spit out blobby fake looking water easy enough, but ramp it up to make something better. It's just too damn slow. Tried using it a few times in projects, but uh, as a lone freelancer with one PC, it's just not practical. I can recommend um, V-Ray's Phoenix. It's incredibly fast and it does a good job. That toolbar you see just there where my cursor is, that's the Phoenix toolbar for particle effects. So it does fire, well, what does it do here? I'm actually gonna be using it for this model to do some water effects and some flame effects. Uh, so it does, uh, it does fire, it does um, cloud simulation. Of course it does water simulation. It does things like beer, it does things like honey, it does things like blood, it does paint. Uh, it's got a whole stack of these different um, setups, waterfalls, oceans, all this sort of stuff, and it's really good. In fact, it's so good, oh, not that one. I actually want to show you guys some some examples from Chaos's website. Now I know B-Ray B -ray can be expensive to purchase, I don't know if you need to purchase it to use Phoenix. It's Chaos Group is the name of the studio that, of the company that creates the software. Um, I just want to go to the showcase here. In fact, actually, I want to go to the video, video section. Where is that? They have a section here which is um, videos that show you it in motion. Here we go. Let's have a look at a couple of these. <clears throat> so this is done in Phoenix. This is their particle system. And it, it is very fast. It's all GPU accelerated. I don't think they'd mind me showing it on stream. It's very supposedly simple to use. I actually haven't used it. I don't use particles for my work, but I will be using it for the project we're working on now. <clears throat> Fluid simulation, yep. But uh, uh, Sniper Girl says, um, I'm just going to mute the music on this. Sniper Girl says, uh, I'm kind of hoping that I can use Quixel's 3D scans and Alchemist. Mm -hmm. Legmark says, That's understandable. Sniper Girl says, I'm looking at using V Ray in the Unreal Engine, been reading up on it. Yeah, I actually haven't used it in the Unreal Engine either. This is not what I wanted. These are the ones I want to show you where you can actually see the particle effect um, in action. So this is a beach scene that they're creating. Let's skip to the good stuff. There we go. So you can see the effect you can get with it. it they, they do a really good job. It, it's really good partic uh, particle software. It, and it does all sorts of fluid simulation, fire, all that sort of stuff. Let's check out the fire and the water one. Uh, but I have to check out V-Ray as well in Unreal um, Sniper Girl. 
Megmog says, uh, that's why I maintain that some applications, cool as they are, are really only useful for medium-large-sized companies with serious computing power. Legmog says, I'll be very interested in seeing this Phoenix liquid simulation. Well, th- these are the fire ones at the moment. I think the liquid one is coming up. Yeah, this is a liquid one here. You can see how fast that's rendering out those particles. Actually, this is the paint one, I think. You hate those kind of scenes, uh, Legmog says. Now let's look at the volcano. Why not? Uh, Snappy Girl says, wow, that's so awesome looking. Legmog says, yeah, don't blame you. Would kill resources. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I've done some t- a couple of quick tests using the Phoenix plugin here in, in Max, and uh, I'm impressed with it. It's very fast. Relatively simple to set up. Might be worth considering Legmog if you're thinking about it. You can see the, the quality that you get here for the... Um, the results aren't bad, and I can tell you it's all GPU accelerated, so the particles render out pretty quickly. So there you go. Actually, let's look at this flame one. I like the fire stuff. Maybe I was a fire bug in my past life. I like flames. So yeah, this again is the um, the smoke and flame example I think they're giving you. So it's good. I can recommend it based on my quick play around with it. The main reason I have it here, even though I don't use it for work, is that the the, the, um, the deal that the studio have when they purchased V-Ray, they got Phoenix as well. So that's why I have it. Uh, and why I'm going to be playing with it for this model that we're creating when we do the render. Uh, Legmog says, where is it? Okay, here's a super cool ocean, but it's constrained within a tiny box area. Like, uh, I had a job which um, required an ocean shop, but, like, I needed the entire ocean, not just a small space. You can make that box as big or as small as you want, Legmog. That, that little box that you saw, that's just the default size when you first place the um, the modify down into a scene but you can resize that to whatever size you want you're not limited just to that tiny box you can make it as big or as small as you want that goes for all of the liquid simulations or fire simulations or whatever now, and of course the bigger the box the slower the um, calculation is going to be um, but there is no limit on how big the simulation is and as I said, it's all GPU accelerated, so it does do it pretty quickly, at least the tests I've done, but I haven't used a two kilometer wide box sort of thing, so I can't speak to that. I'm pretty sure that you could, I know you're a Cinema 4D user leg mug, I'm pretty sure V-Ray comes for Cinema 4D as well, I'm pretty sure it does. So Phoenix should too. Just something to keep in mind, just putting that out there, just mentioning it for you guys. Uh, Legmark says, yeah, exactly when you want a shot in which you see an ocean going all the way to the horizon line of the Earth, becomes kind of an epic... Well, (laughs) you're asking a lot there. If you want to animate an ocean to the horizon of the planet, that's that sort of scale, then yeah, that's going to be a big ask for any any lonely PC to work on, I'm afraid, no matter what software you're using. Uh, Snappy Goss says, do you think it would be worth worth doing it doing a V-Ray render of the van. Sure, V-Ray, we use V-Ray at the studio to do all of our client work. <laughs> um, we're looking at, I think they're gonna start doing work with Unreal now as well, after me doing that demo for my cinematic, um, but most of our clients, we use V-Ray exclusively. Um, I'm trialing Corona at the moment, simply because I, like I told you guys, V-Ray can be quite complicated to use for somebody that's not used to it, um, so, we're, we're tr- I'm trolling Corona for them because it's much simpler for new people to use in the studio. Uh, Legmog says, my main problem with these, here is a cool uh, simulation inside of a tiny box, was uh, a particle system called X-Particles. Just going to be keeping an eye on OBS while I'm talking. Uh, all the tutorials only concern themselves with small cubic areas. I need to do a snow scene calculation, which covered a huge landscape. 
And like 90% of the tutorial stuff just could not work with these with the size I needed. You see, I'm here, I'm back, I'm that's all good. It's all good. I'm gonna be watching OBS. <sighs> potato, Australian potato internet. I feel for everyone around the world that has to put up with crap internet like I do. Um, yeah, but again, mentioning Eon View. Eon View can do um, rain and can do snow as well. It has a built-in particle system. I don't really mess with that because I, when I'm creating my renders, I don't want it to be raining or snowing, but it does have a particle system built into it that, where you can add rain and snow. I don't know how much that slows for you down, but um, again, just mentioning it. You know, I found Firefox to be one of the worst browsers I've used in a while. Um, yeah, I don't know, Firefox, wow. Mm, I have all sorts of problems with Firefox. Going completely off topic. Android Lust, it's good to see you Android Lust. You're here for the right, on the right side of the, um, of the cutout of the stream for some reason. I don't know what's going on, anyway. It's good to see you, Android Dust. How are you? You well? And again, I'm just making sure that everything is running properly. Just as well, I noticed that um, that OBS had uh, dropped the connection. Actually, I must. Uh, there is a new feature on Twitch they introduced uh, a couple of days ago called um, Disconnect Protection. <laughs> it must happen to a lot of streamers. Uh, I haven't turned it on yet. I must remember to turn it on. So what happens is when the stream goes down, if you're watching somebody on Twitch and the stream goes down, um, they're, they're going to pop up a graphic that says, with, 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 with a little graphic with a, a camera and a Twitch logo that's floating up and down and a disconnected cord. You know, like please stand by that you see on TV sometimes, or you used to. That's going to pop up and it'll keep the connection alive until the streamer can reconnect again. So <laughs> instead of the stream going completely down and then coming back again, the stream will go down. This 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 this, this graphic will pop up. This disconnection protection to keep the stream alive. And then when the stream starts back up again, that'll disappear and the streamer will reappear. So that's a great um, thing that they've added a couple of days ago. But I must remember to turn it on. <laughs> Sniper Girl says, yeah, uh, got lucky. Phil just got back. <laughs> Net issues as usual. Andrew Lust says, I'm great. Got to finish some something before 12 a.m. here. You're a night owl, Android Lust. Uh, Legmog says, it's like the tutorial will be all, okay, make a 10 by 10 particle emitter and make it emit 100 particles per second. And you'll be all okay. My scene needs to be 100 times the size, so 1,000 by 1,000 emitter size and 1,000 particles emitted per second and everything just dies. You're asking a lot there though, like Moggy, you really are. Uh, Smurfery says that sounds like a nice feature. Andrew Doss says, hey Legmog. Sniper Girl says, and what if uh, the streamer isn't able to come back? Then after 90 seconds, the image will close down and the stream will finish. So that's, that's what happens. It, the streamer has 90 seconds to reconnect after the stream goes down before the graphic disappears and the stream ends anyway. So that's what will happen. Snuffy Girl says, uh, what are you working on? What are you working on, Android Lust? Mercury says it's called FPX. <laughs> Pardon me. <coughs> what are we talking about, Mercury? What are you posting in Discord? What's called FBX? Oh, oh you're, you're talking. Sniper Echo and I were talking about how you can't you can't load up a Max file in Maya and you can't load up a Maya file in Max. Uh, he was bitching about it and I'm bitching about it too because I'd, I'd really like to be able to import a Maya file into Max, but you can't. Uh, and just like um, Maya, you can't import a Max file. I don't know why Autodesk do that. They they both they own the same software. They should allow people to import those versions and. Uh, Smurfery says that FBX is a solution, which is true. FBX is an open source solution. Well, open source is, as, as open source as Adobe gets, but yeah, I'm sorry, Autodesk gets. 
Android Lust says, a character sculpt. It seems like I procrastinated on it, but I didn't. Okay. <laughs> We're supposed to be getting this done. I need to get this done today. So, um, so when I come back next week, we can start texturing. So let's do some work, I think. Um, alrighty. So, is this been UV mapped is the next question. We're just going through to me. Yeah, it looks like it has. Just going through to make sure everything has a UV map. Yes, it has. That's good. Let's assign it the plain white color so I know it's UV mapped and we're good to go. While I keep another eye on OBS like a hawk. I'm watching you like a hawk, OBS. Okay, now um, what I want to do is I want to work on these small columns. Oh, come on, don't do that. Uh, I want to I want to have like three different texture maps for these columns so we can mi mix and match and we don't notice that they're reusing the same texture. Legmog says, yeah, ultimately a lot of simulation showcases exist in a kind of microcosm uh, contained in a tiny area. But in my experience, most jobs which require such simulations want the simulations to at least appear to be stretching off to infinity, uh, whether it be liquid, snow or whatever. That's true. Um, although a lot, a lot of simulation work is done for commercials and a lot of liquid simulation is generally in, a, in an isolated area, in a commercial anyway. Depending on the commercial, it, it's all dependent on the script, I guess, for what you're doing. But you're right. <clears throat> the, the bigger the area, the slower the simulation, the more um, the more horsepower that you're going to need to render it out and all that sort of stuff. It's all true, it's true, it's true. Okay, so we want to look at these columns. So, but the first thing I want to do here before I do anything is I've noticed I've noticed with these columns, and I remember when I made them, I said to myself, well, I'm not going to put um, these larger columns at the base on the inside, like they are on the outside here. Um, but I didn't put them on the inside. But now I'm thinking maybe I should. I'm just trying to decide whether I should or not. Just to keep consistency with the look. I mean, they are small columns. We could get away with not having them there. Oh, like Mark says, I, I did a lot of jobs in my early days about industrial thingies installed out at sea. Uh, one nightmare shot was a client needed a big floaty thing in the ocean, love those technical terms, uh, which needed uh, waves to crash into it in a realistic way. Yeah, but even say, let's use that as, as an example, using Phoenix and using a smaller box area. You, you could sit your thingy in a smaller box to create the wave uh, animation of the wave hitting it. And then you could, you could, um, that's not what I'm looking for. You could do it in post then of another render of a larger scene of ocean. Do you know what I mean? So instead of trying to render the entire ocean as a dynamic simulation, just render the simulation around the actual object that's in the ocean and and uh, and then post do it in post production combine them both together. There's ways around everything if you're creative enough, I guess. Um, yeah, so these these columns, I'm just just trying to work out if I want to put them. Uh, let, let's see if they, what they look like if I do actually move move them over. So I'm just going to isolate this one, open up the group. I'm just going to copy a couple of these over. and we will see if it looks better or worse. I think the reason I didn't do it was because they're going to be quite small. 
Uh, Lee Mark says, yeah, I seem to remember trying real flow, but uh, even having a small isolated area full of liquid particles was insanely slow. Well, again, I can... Uh, Phoenix is very fast, but provided you don't go nuts with your particle area, uh, it, it can produce stuff pretty quickly, at least on my machine. And I'm pretty sure on yours as well, because you upgraded your machine at the end of last year, so it's, it's new. Uh, Legmark says, that's why I'm going to be very intrigued to see how Phoenix works for you. I don't think I've touched Liquid Simulation since that nightmare. Well, I, I am going to be using Phoenix to do um, <clears throat> Liquid Simulation of a Fountain on this project we're doing and also a Fire Particle Effects. So you can check it out when I start playing with it myself. Uh, we're going to learn at the same time because, again, I don't do a lot with particles uh, in my work. So <clears throat> I'm relatively new to Phoenix as well, but I have done a couple of quick tests with it and it is very fast. Sniper Girl says, uh, don't blame you there. <laughs> okay, so th this is too long. So the first thing we need to do is... We need... Now, it's, these aren't UV maps, so we have no problems doing a scale. We're not going to mess up any UV mapping because there is none. So we're going to start by making it smaller. Um... Let's jump out of isolation mode. Let us open up our group. Uh, yeah, I'm just thinking I want to keep consistency with the look going up these steps which is why I'm thinking of putting these um, these pieces in Legmark says random question Phil does your company have like a dedicated on-site render farm yes we do we do we have a server a large server room uh, that we use for all of our renders uh, and the studio can also pull in all of the um, all of the workstations as well as part of their render farm if they need to. Like at night when there's no one in the studio, they can pull in all of the um, everybody's desktop machines and, and use that as part of the server render farm. So yeah, we do. We have it all on site. We don't. Uh, we don't. We don't use uh, external sources for our renders. Yeah, I, it's. I think it's. I think it's probably mainly because we do a lot of ND, uh, we do a lot of work where we have to sign contracts, and if any of that work ever got leaked, we get in, we'd be in trouble. So the directors and the IT guys decided it was better to have an in-house server set up that we use. It's nice in summer because that room is nice and cool. They run the air, the air conditioning. The studio is air conditioned anyway, but they, they run the air conditioning in the server rooms much colder. <laughs> so in the middle of summer here in, in Australia where it's 40 degrees, you work, walk into the server room and it's beautiful. <laughs> uh, Tuatara, good to see you, Tuatara. How are you? It has been a while. I hope you're well. It's good to see you, Tuatara. Tuatara. Legmunk says, nice, it's unbelievable. That company I often do work on site. <laughs> the company I often do on site work at has no conventional CPU render farm. Wow. <laughs> it always comes down to leaving all the office computers on overnight weekends for renders, which seems crazy. I guess it depends on how big the studio is and how much work they, they, they need to do. Um, I think it sounds crazy personally as well, but no. This, our, this, the studio I work for, they do do like we do pull in the um, <clears throat> the workstation machines at, at, in the evening as well, <clears throat> but they have a dedicated server that they use for rendering. Um, yeah, <clears throat> particularly now. Pardon me while I clear my throat. Particularly now that I, I, I mentioned to you guys at the end of last year, the studio I work for have opened up a second studio. That was why I got sick because my workload doubled. Um, so yeah, they, they have a lot of work on. 
And without the dedicated server, they'd be really in trouble. They, they, you know, they, yeah, it, it would not be good. It would not be good. So I feel that that seems like a silly way. Unless they don't have a lot of work they've got to do leg mob. And I've just noticed here we're missing a couple of bars. Must, must remember to fix that. Chiotara says, talking to Snappy Girl, saying on a full time break at the moment, hunting for a new role, annoyingly. Oh no, I, it's always terrible when you go to look for a new new role. Uh, I'm just going to make this one a bit smaller because it's um, it's up here on the top of the thingy. The thingy on the thingy. I'm as good as leg one. Thingy on the thingy. Let's move this one up. And Legmog says they do have a four node GPU render farm for, reg for Redshift, but even that seems incredibly small. Oh no. Yeah, that is still incredibly small. Again, uh, we have a dedicated uh, IT department at the studio, and they take care of all the server stuff. I don't really have much to do with it, apart from going in there to get cool. Um, but, so I'm not sure exactly what the hardware is they're running, but whatever it is, it does the renders pretty quickly. And like I said, in the evening, if we still need more power, then they will pull in the um, the workstations from the studio, from the, from on the floor of the studio as well. Uh, simply because no one's there using them, so they may as well if they need to. But they don't rely just on that. We we couldn't get anything rendered if that if we just relied on that. Okay, so I'm looking at this side, which has none. And this side where we put them in to match this, and I think it looks better with the um, with the small bases here, just so that we keep that consistency. Remember, I'm always b very big on keeping consistency and everything. I've said it many times while I was doing the um, the UE4 project. Everything will blend better if it's consistent. That goes for textures as well. When you're texturing something. Try to use as few very incredibly different textures. Everything should blend together really smoothly. But the same goes for modeling as well. Sniper Girl says to Tuatara, oh whoa, that sucks. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that too, Tuatara. Like I said, it's it's it's, it's terrible when you've got to look for a new role. It really is. For whatever reason. The studio closing down, the project falling through, so they can't keep staff on. I've seen it all, I've lived through it all, I've been, yeah, so it's, it's never nice. It's always a pain. Uh, Chiwatara says, got to redefine what I do. 12 years of video game research producer. Time to do some more training with ZBrush. <laughs> and even uh, other piece of software I know, yeah. Expand a little bit more from ZBrush. ZBrush is great, don't get me wrong. Every, a lot of studios use ZBrush. Um... But you don't want you don't want that to be the only thing in your toolkit of knowledge. And you guys know how much I hate ZBrush. <laughs> Love the software, hate the interface. Um, but it's a good opportunity for a change. So that, that's a great idea to Atara. If, um, after twelve years doing video research producer, then if you want a bit of a change, it's a perfect time to do it. Snappy Girl says, uh, "You know that feeling." Android Lust says, uh, was it 12 years of joy though? <laughs> Legmog says, oh good luck to Tuatara. Think of this as an exciting opportunity to learn more exciting stuff. That's exactly right. Think of it as an opportunity, as Legmog said, to um, to learn something new and to move into a new area. And uh, Sniper Girl is asking Tuatara if you're in the US or Canada. I have a list of some game studios that I'm compiling. And Tuatara says, uh, yep, did some seriously cool stuff, always liked research work. And uh, Tuatara, New Zealander, stone's throw from Weta. Weta Digital, digital being um, being the studio that, um, what's his name? <laughs> the one that did Lord of the Rings, what's his name? It escapes me at this minute. But yeah, and they're known for producing good stuff. Good, doing good work. 
there's actually quite a few studios in New Zealand. Game studios, film studios. I've um, had a friend that's worked over there before. I actually haven't worked over there, but I'd like to. I'd like to work in New Zealand. Any studios in New Zealand wanting to hire someone? Because <laughs> I love New Zealand. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful looking country. Just, just beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. And my heart goes out to you guys in New Zealand too for the Christchurch um, thing that happened recently, which is just terrible. Uh, Snapper Girl says, okay, I figured where you were, wanted to ask. By New Zealand, guess that's where you were. Uh, Legmog says, I feel I see so many 3D streamers here on Twitch who are fresh out of education and looking to get employed in the industry, and so many of them seem to focus solely on ZBrush. And I don't know, ZBrush does seem very cool, but it isn't It kind of quite niche in the grand, grand scheme. Of, it is. Uh, again, now... <laughs> You see what I work with as my daily drivers. You've seen me working before on Twitch. I use Max. I use Ryzen to do UV mapping. I use Eon View to do renders and, and uh, V-Ray to do renders. Uh, I use ZBrush occasionally. Occasionally. Uh, but even when I was in games and film, I would only use ZBrush occasionally. If you want to be a character artist, a character modeler, ZBrush by all means. That's your, That would be your number one thing to learn. But if you, if you want to be anything else apart from a character modeler, then ZBrush is not, should not be the first thing you, you learn or should not be the only thing you learn. So you're right, Legmog, I see it too. A lot of people get caught up with the um, ZBrush mania. Uh, uh, I understand that it's, a, it's, 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 it's cool to sculpt in ZBrush. That's a cool thing. It's fun. Um, but unless you're a character modeler, it's not what you're going to be using to get to, in your job. Most times, anyway. Uh, so you are completely right, Legmo. Uh, Chiotara says, The toolkit uh, is I have a pretty extensive. Uh, was doing augmented reality, virtual reality stuff. Better improve my uh, Unity Unreal skills. Yes, for sure. Particularly Unreal. I love the Unreal Engine. And that's uh, something good to, to learn as well, because... Um, it's not just making games with Unreal now. Like the studio I'm working for are going to be using Unreal as part of the workflow for the, the um, ArchViz clients as well. So in film as well, it's used in film to do a lot of pre-production stuff like a, a, a film wants some, some sort of effect or they want some location. They're using Unreal now to do to, to prototype that location quickly so that the director can get a a feel for how it's going to look and when they like the design then they can send it through to get it modeled and rendered uh, in whatever rendering software they're using so knowing a game engine like unreal or unity will help in other areas as well apart from games Sniper Girl saying, uh, LOL, any studios anywhere in the world will hire me? Of course they will. Your, your work is good. But you've got to make, p putting together a good portfolio is the most important thing. If you're looking for work in a studio, whether it's games, film, archbiz, they've got to be able to see what you're capable of making. So a portfolio is really, really important, uh, which is why I harp on about it so much and tell you guys not to stuff it full of one type of thing and not to have too much, otherwise people won't look at it all. Um, so it's, a portfolio is really important. No problem to Atara. Android Lust says to Legmog, sounds like me, but uh, I don't only use ZBrush right now. It's 50% my... Well, that's fine. As long as you know a 3D software program, that's that's important. That's great. You're, you, everything, everything's cool, Android Lust. It'll be good. Legmog says, yes, uh, I get the impression the most 3D workflows are very slow and not exactly exciting. The ZBrush has uh, a very immediate feedback to it, I guess. Yeah which is maybe in, endures itself to a lot of newbies. I think that's the reason too. Because you do get such immediate feedback while you use ZBrush, I think that's the reason a lot of um, a lot of people love to use it and gravitate towards it. Now I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm going to be deleting this column because I don't want to work with just UV mapping this one, then we're going to copy it over and we're going to create separate texture maps for them so they look different. So we only have to worry about UV mapping one, and I only have to worry about adding those little bottom pieces to one. And I've decided I like them, so I'm going to keep them in. 
Uh, Chiwatara says zebra substance, Maya fusion, unity, unreal Adobe, everything. That's the way to go. Uh, Chiwatara says, uh, have forgotten what you use, Phil, for retopology. I use uh, Z remesher in um, in ZBrush, or I use um, Mesh Lab, I think it's called, which is free software you can download. Uh, no. <laughs> I keep hitting the wrong one. That's the one I want. Oh, yes, that's the one I want. Do I have a shortcut for it? L let me let me double check the name because I can never remember the name of it. But generally, I use Z Remesher inside of ZBrush. Instant Meshes. That's the that's the software I use. Instant Meshes. Uh, it's free. It was developed by a university. I'm not sure if they were in England or in the US. Uh, and if if you're working with um, photogrammetry objects, it's really good to do retopology on high poly photogrammetry stuff, uh, at least the initial stage, and then you can either do it by hand to refine it or take it into ZBrush. Um, I'll just pop a link here in chat for anyone that wants to check it out. You can download it, try it, try it out. You can see. Um, see here how it works so it's a good way to take photogrammetry million billion polygon objects and reduce them down and then you can refine it after the fact after that so i can recommend it it's very good and it's free can't get better than free i've said it before and i'll say it again um Sniper Girl says, "We'll be honest. Before the van, uh, I would have to say that the only that only 20 30 percent of what I did touched ZBrush, kind of. Uh, hang on, <laughs> kind of forcing me to learn it better. Yeah, well, no, no, no I'm not saying don't learn ZBrush. ZBrush is good. Uh, Chiwatara says ZBrush to me was a jump from pulling pixels to smoothing clay." Yeah, no, it is. I mean, it's nice to work in ZBrush when you when you when you're sculpting in ZBrush. It's nice, you know. It's nice to be able to to push polygons around and shape them. That's that's cool. It's fun. So I, I get why people like ZBrush. I do. You can post your art station. Um, I don't think you can't post it in Twitch chat to Atara unless you're a sub. So don't post links in Twitch chat. But post it in, on the Discord server. You're on the Discord, aren't you? On, on the Phil Does 3D Discord server. Post a link there, and uh, I'll show it on screen if you want. Yeah, don't don't post it in, in Twitch chat. <laughs> you, yeah, post it, post it in the Discord, because everybody that jumps on the Discord will love to see it. So post your art station to Atara on the Discord server, the Phil Does 3D Discord server, if you haven't already. Oh, there you go. Nightbot did it, and I just did it. I think you're on the Discord, um, but I'm going. I can see your link because, because you know, I'm special. Um, so I'll check it out now and we'll show it. But I still, I still encourage you to post it on Discord for anyone that's not watching today, uh, so that they can check it out uh, later on, or anyone that watches this stream back. Cool. Yeah, I've seen this. This is nice. I, I remember seeing this model. I really liked it. I, I like the style of it. No, really nicely done. Like the design, the style. I really like the design of it and the model as well. It's beautifully modeled. So, and nicely textured too. <clears throat> Let me catch up with chat now. Um, Chiwatara, yes. Sniper Girl says we're allowed to post links. I, I, yes, um, if you're a subscriber, Sniper Girl, you're a moderator, so you can post links anyway. Uh, but if you're a sub to me, then you can post links in Twitch chat. That's not a problem. Uh, if you're not a sub, you can't. <coughs> so subs can, but if, you, if you're not a sub, post the links in the Discord. And I'll see, I'll see it immediately because Discord is open right next to my chat. Twitch chat, so I can see them both at the same time. Don't think that if you post to Discord, I'm not going to see it. I will see it. Um, 
Uh, yes, and, and it's encouraged. You are correct, but only if you're a sub. <laughs> Uh, Leg Mog says, but one thing I do not understand is people who insist on spending many, many man hours learning how to perfectly recreate a person's face from reference photos, uh, like from celebrities and such like. I always end up thinking, why bother spending hours trying to sculpt a perfect likeness of Tom Cruise when in real life they'll just scan his face? That's pretty much true now. I mean, that's, yeah, unfortunately that is true. Um... That's why photogrammetry is becoming so much more prevalent now in all things, not just characters, humans, but everything, uh, because you can get it done much more quickly. And every studio is about getting the job done as quickly as you can. It means that they can release the product more quickly or they can take on more work. So they're always going to look for ways to speed up their pipeline and photogrammetry is a great way to do that. It's the whole reason the studio that I work for now employed me because of my photogrammetry stuff. Um, because I'm not an architect, I'd never studied architecture. Um, I did study design and programming and that probably helped a little bit but it was photogrammetry because I could speed up their pipeline, their workflow. All the architects. But you are right, I agree, Legmog, everything everything is being scanned now. <laughs> My apologies to Atar for you being timed out though. And that's Nightbot doing that, I have no control over it. I, that bot is a, is has a mind of its own. Uh, be careful to not to post a link too often because Nightbot <laughs> keep timing you out for longer and longer and longer to Atar. <laughs> um, Legmog says, like, having I can make perfect recreations of real life person's face and ZBrush on your CV, in my opinion, just kind of makes me go, so what? <laughs> I wouldn't be quite that mean, Legmog, but, um, it gets back to the thing that these people like doing it. They like sculpting by hand. I, I get that because I like painting our textures by hand. That's why I like to use Mari. I get it. I'm going to be using Substance Painter to do texturing as well because it's quick. But I'm, then I'm going to take those textures into Mari and I'm going to overpaint them by hand in areas because I like I like doing that. So I, I get why they like sculpting Tom Cruise by hand. I do get it. But you're right. It's studios nowadays. When you go when you go to work for a studio, they want to, they want they want it done as fast as possible. That's just the way it is. That's the business they're in. Um, within reason, of course. I mean, you you, you can't. You can't treat your, your your artists as if they're machines. So a studio that just tries to push work down your throat, get, get you to get it out the door as quickly as possible, is not a good studio. You, you want to work for a studio that, that appreciates its artists and, and the art that you do as part of your job. Having said that, though, they still want it done as quickly as you possibly can. So... It is a business after all, boys and girls, remember? These people want to make money. They employ you so, you, so that, that the company can make money. So. Yes, the Twitch bot is a pain snapper girl. Um, but still important for me to have, have Nightbot there. He was with me when I first started and had none of you mods. So I'm going to keep my Nightbot. Even though he is a pain. And has a mind of its own. Android Lost says, oh, I remember you, your models to Atari. Yeah, I, I do too. They're, they're very cool. <laughs> I got caught up. Nice texturing. I love that. It's a nice shot of inside of um, ZBrush. Nice. Uh, and yeah, I really like the texturing you've done here too. It's very cool. We have a skull here, an elephant skull, was it? Yep. I'm watching you, OBS. <laughs> That's nicely done. Be cool to see it textured up. Or have you textured it? I like the detailing you've got that's going on here as well. That's nice. Uh, yep, I remember this too. That was the original model that was scanned. 
I'm not sure if I'm following you. I'm, I'm on Outstation as well, um, Chiwatara, but if I'm not, I will follow you after the stream. In fact, I'm going to look now. I'm just going to do it off here on my um, second browser. I thought I was following you, but I may not be. I'm not, I'll follow you right now, um, Chiwatara, on my art station, so I just followed you there. So I do like your work. Very nice. Um, Sniper Girl says, yeah, sorry, been for over a year and forgot that you couldn't post links here without subbing. Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah. Uh, it's for, for two reasons. Now, I know uh, some people might not like the fact that you can't post links in my chat unless you're a sub. I do it for two reasons. Uh, one reason is to stop spam so that my, my, my chat doesn't become feed food for some spam bot or spammer. And the second reason is to give people that want to sub to me uh, a perk, if you like, of being a sub. So... So th those are the two reasons that I do it. But having said that, that's why I created the Phil Dust 3D Discord server so that if you if you weren't a sub or you couldn't afford to sub, which I get and it's completely fine, uh, you can post links in Discord and I can see them there and I can show your work that way. So. You're sorting Discord in the background to your tower and no problem. Um, Snubby Girl says, kind of wish I could ban Nightbot for a night. <laughs> Uh, Tiotar says, yeah, currently following um, Chris Costa, who does these ultra-realistic realistic sculpts in his spare time. Details stunning. Cool. Snappy Girl says, well, it's beautiful. Yeah, the models are beautiful. I love them. I love the design, too. The texturing is very nice, too. You do some nice work. Uh, are you on uh, ArtStation, Snappy Girl? Pardon me. Can you post your art station link in Twitch chat for me, Sniper Girl? And if I'm not following you, I will follow you right now. And considering everybody's doing the art station thing, I'll do it as well. Because why not? Anyone watching me, you can type exclamation art station in Twitch chat at any time to see, I think, to get my art station link. But uh, just in case, there's my art station there. But if you. Oh cool, there's yours. I'm just going to copy your link, Sniper Girl. And I'm going to check to see if I'm following you right now. No, I'm not, but I'm following you right now. So you've just been followed, um, Sniper Girl. So, yeah, again. What are we talking about? <laughs> um, cool, well, thanks. Yes, every, everyone should follow everybody else's art station because we're all part of the same community here, and particularly if you watch me streaming. We're all going to be chatting at the same at one time at, when I'm streaming it generally. So if we know if we follow each other's art station, then we can keep a track of each other's new work. And you can show it here on stream as well while I'm streaming. Android Lust says, I'm going to post something I made a while ago in Discord. I used someone's concept art and it might be just slightly not suitable for work, even though it's an alien-like being. Post it, post it in Discord um, and I'll decide if it's suitable and I'll show it on stream if it is. And if it's not, you can check it out on Discord, guys and girls. But I'll have a look when um, when Android Lust posts it to Discord. But I love your work, um, Tuatara. It's very nice. And I will keep following you on ArtStation. I'll keep, I'll keep track of what you're up to. Snappy Girl says to Tuatar, where was the link posted in Discord? Not seeing it? Yeah, I don't think he's posted it yet. I don't see it either. Sniper Girl says a lot of my stuff is kind of dated. Uh, wow, thanks for the follows. Tuatara says, sweet, followed you both. Cool. Android Lust says, my art station, I haven't updated it. Oh, cool. Let's, let's have a look at Android Lust's art station. Am I following you, Android Lust? If I'm not, I soon will be. 
This is Android Lust Art Station, and I'm just going to check my art station over here and see if I'm following you. I'm following you now, um, Android Lust. I just followed you on your art station. Very nice motorcycle. Yes, very nice. I like the uh, texture as well. Uh, the the lighting, I should say, that you that you've um, introduced here. It's very cool. Like through the wheel rim and um, these backlights here. Looks really cool. Very nice. Nice renders as well. This controller is really... Actually, I think I've seen this controller before. So I commented on how much I loved the design of this controller. Like, I'd love to buy this design controller. I love these paint splatters. I think it's so cool. You'll notice one of my... Um, one of my um, emotes for the channel is uh, build the Fildo Art email is my little robot, my little egg bot with paint splatters over it. I love paint splatters. Very nice. My apologies for next door slamming doors. I must have been brought up in a barn. And this is very cool. With his plank of wood. Thank you, Tuatara. I'm glad you like my art station. It doesn't have all of my work in it. It's just got a selection of stuff. Um, but that gets back to what I was telling you guys. Don't put too much stuff in your portfolios because more than 12 to 14 images, people are just not going to look at it all. They just don't have time. I love this um, this design. This is really cool. Is this a real thing, or did you? Who, where did you come up? Where did you come up with this design? Android Lust. I love that. I, like, I'd love that in real life. Like, as a sculpture or something that I could put on a table. I think it's great. You haven't posted yet? No problem. We'll take your time to your Atari. You can post it whenever you're reading. There's no rush. Uh, Snappy Girl says, yeah, seen that controller. Android Dust says, that was a door slamming. Yes, that was. My apologies. Tara says, I really like that you have modelled the interior of the controller too. Yeah, that's very cool. And Android Dust says to Tara, I wanted to animate the controller, but I didn't. Uh, but tell me, where did you, where, where did you, where's this design from Android Lust? Is this a thing that you came across, a design... I want it. I want it in real life. That's what I'm saying. I, I want this in real life. I think that's cool. That's the sort of thing I'd put on a table in my house. Oh, it's, it's Bobby Duke's sculpture. I'm not, I'm not familiar with Bobby Duke, but um, I love it. I love it. Love the sculpture. Uh, and of course, the modeling and the rendering is very nice as well. Goes without saying. And this car, I do remember this car. And you posted this other link. And so I'll just check out really quickly. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> That's cool. I actually prefer your version of it, to be honest. I, I like just the, the chrome. Oh, this car's very nice. Yeah, I like your version with just the chrome. I think it's, it's more impactful. Uh, his version's nice. It's much more colourful, but uh, I actually prefer yours. And if, if I was going to actually have it in my home, I prefer it to just just to be chrome. Looks very cool. Nice origami here. Nice work. Nice texture too. And. A disc and a case, which is surprisingly more difficult to do than you would think. Creating a CD disc in a case, it's 
and, and actually nicely nicely created too actually very realistic it's actually more difficult than you would give than you give credit for and this car beautiful car very nice car a nice render as well really nice work um andrew lost sure. Um, Andrew Doss says it was made out of coloured pencils, that's, that's, which is really interesting. Uh, Sniper Girl says uh, coloured pencils, wow. <laughs> Got to agree with Phil, I like yours better. I do too, I like yours better as well. Okay, what I'm, gonna, I'm going to um, close this group and just go into an isolation mode here. I'm just going to tidy this up a little bit because uh, we don't need these bits sticking out the bottom here. In fact, I'm going to remove that because we don't need that. And I'm going to just hide, or we'll just, just reduce the size a little bit. Let's do the same for this one. Again, this is not going to affect any, any, anything because we're not UV mapped yet. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to start attaching all these pieces together so we can take it to uh, Rhizome and uh, UV map it. I'm just going to collapse everything. And let's start attaching it all together. So we want, we want that. And that. Uh, Shuatara says, uh, so where in your Discord, Phil, would you like the link? Post it in the gallery section. That way, yeah, post it in the gallery section. If you want to post it in general chat, you can. But if you want, I think the gallery section might be better because uh, that way people, that when they're looking through the gallery at people's work, will come across your link and they can check it out there. And it doesn't move, like, it won't get lost as quickly as in general chat because people post in general chat more often. But I'll leave it up to you, though. If you want to post it in either one, that's fine. Your judgment, I'll leave it to your judgment. Uh, that goes for you too, Sniper Girl, if you want to post your link, or anyone else watching that has an ArtStation account and wants to post a link to their work, please feel free to jump into Discord and post the link. Okay, let's send this through to, actually before I do that, because it's still a, a part of a group. Let me <sighs> see what Max does there. If you, if you have a group and you don't close the group and then you try and isolate it, all it does is isolate the box the group comes in. Uh, I'm just going to ungroup it here and I'm going to send this over to um, Ryzen UV. And we're going to do the same thing we did yesterday where I'm going to do the, um, the columns by hand and then I'll use the automated tools to do the rest of it. That is the best way to tackle this object I found. So I want to do the seam in the middle, so it's not seen. I'm doing the top and the bottom differently to the way I did it yesterday. This is the way I should have done it yesterday. Instead of going through and doing it by hand, I'm just selecting the sub object here and doing a cut. Much easier. 
be quicker. Okay, now we just need to do our cuts down the middle. Redo that one, I think I messed it up. Okay, let's unfold it, optimize it, pack it. Okay, just looks like I might have missed one here. So I'm just going to manually cut this one out. I grab the wrong one, I bet I did. I think what ha what's happened here is I haven't cut it all the way through, yeah. That's better. Cool. Links now there, cool. Pure tar, good. Oh, Android Lost has posted an image here. I'm not picking me up with my Discord. <laughs> uh, let me have a look here. So this is some stuff Android Lost has posted in the Discord under the gallery. This is a concept art, I'm assuming. And this is Android Lost work, 3D model work. I'm just going to grab the link. Okay, this is the one you said might not be suitable for work. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to um, not show that. <laughs> Simply because Twitch have rules regarding uh, nudity. <coughs> Pardon me. I love the model. It looks great. Jump on the Discord server, boys and girls, to see it. <laughs> um, it probably might be okay for Twitch because there's no nipples showing. But, yeah, Twitch, Twitch have rules where you can't show nudity. Uh, they allow it in video games if it's part of the game. I'm not going to push it with Twitch to see whether, yeah, we're going to play it safe and I'm going to say check it out on the Discord server just to be on the safe side. But the model looks great, Android does. And good, Kyochara and Snappy Girl have posted their art stations in the gallery on the Discord. Good to see. Uh, anyone else watching back this stream uh, at another time, maybe over the weekend when the premiere event stream is, is run, if you're watching me for the first time and you want to show your work, you please feel free to post it on the Discord server as well. Under the gallery where these two guys and girls have just done it. Yeah, she's somewhere covered. I, I, it probably would be okay, Sniper Girl, but I just don't want to risk it. I, I just don't want the headache. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do it. Because Twitch, yeah, they do have all sorts of rules about nudity. 
um, even in an art stream, which is unfortunate because, you know, that's what art is all about. It's all about the nudity. Artists have been painting nude people since day dot. A sniper girl says, hey, is there an, uh, an edge wear deforming in substance painter? Edge wear deforming. Not that I'm aware of. There, there is edge wear, but not deforming. What do you mean deforming? Do you mean actually changing the mesh? If you mean changing the mesh, then no, not that I'm aware of. Uh, if you mean just general edge wear, then yep, there is. I am just going to select these and cut them. And let's do the same for the bottom. It's not okay. <laughs> Android Lust says, Sniper Girl says, uh, keep on getting told that I should have done the, <clears throat> the plow and stuff painter instead of sculpting it out like in ZBrush and baking it. Tuatara says, right, that was a mission. Uh, stupid long passwords. Discord app is now running. Cool. <laughs> Remember too, if you don't want to install the Discord app, you can ac access Discord just through your web browser, unless they've changed it. But you used to be able to just, just jump on Discord in the web browser. Um, so you don't need to install the app if you don't want to. But Discord's great. You should be using it because it's um, not, not just because of the Phil Does 3D Discord, but there's a lot of great uh, different discords that you can join from all different places, games, studios, all that sort of stuff. Uh, so it's worth installing and using. I love Discord, love it. Sniper Girl says, can still access via browser. I don't have the app. Yeah, well, there you go. Uh, you can still access it via the browser. So you don't need to install the app if you don't want to. Android Lust says, uh, in substance, you can make texture for welding. That's why people probably told you to use it and then bake it out. Yeah. Uh, yep, yep. <laughs> but it's, yep, that's true. Yeah. I, I, I understand what Android Lust is saying. Apart, um, Substance Painter, and you're using the world thing. Android Lust says there's an Edgeware smart mask that you can use to modify to your liking. And Sniper Girl says that uh, she uses the worlds and Painter isn't as good in my opinion. I, I, I haven't used them, I don't know, but I, I would always say doing it probably, modeling it by hand in ZBrush is probably going to give you a better result simply because you're, you're doing it by hand. <laughs> and that always looks better. Um, I'm just going to select these as well and we're going to isolate them. And I'm going to use the automated tools here though to do this uh, map. Use this one. That's fine. Show everything again. And I forgot one. That'll be right. Show everything again. Uh, now I'm going. To, I'm just going to use the automated tool here to do the rest of this because I don't want to do it by hand. And this is why I like this tool, this program so much because it's so easy and quick. Just got to make sure I select everything. I should have actually gone into this object mode. That would have been better. There we go. So let's do our automatic unwrap. And that looks good. Let's uh, show everything. And I'm just going to get it to do a, a repack now. 
So all of our texels are the same density. And that looks good, let's send it back. Okay, now let's just assign that plain color so that we know that we've UV mapped it. And I'm going to jump out of isolation mode. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate this column now over this side. So to do that, I'm going to make sure I select everything because I want to regroup it again. Just so I don't forget anything. No, actually, just before I copy this over, I don't, we need to texture up this um, bowl as well, so I'm just going to open up the group. Isolate this part of the bowl. I'm going to ungroup those because they were pre-grouped. It's going to collapse my stack. I'm going to throw down the checker pattern to see if that inner bowl is actually being um, UV mapped. And it has, so that's good. I'm going to do that too on the edge here to see if it's been UV mapped. And it has. So I'm going to assign a plain color now. Uh, and we're actually going to join these two pieces together, I think. So I'm going to attach the inner to the to the ring, but that's going to mess up our UV. So I'm going to throw down an unwrap UVW, and I'm going to repack it inside of Max. I'm not going to turn rotate clusters on, but I will turn on fill holes. Uh, again, I'm going to double check that hasn't messed up our UVs. No, that's fine. All right. Let's turn off seams because I hate seeing that green seam. Okay. Now we can close our group. Hang on, what's going on here? Um, Sniper Girl says, I'll continue working with ZBrush. Uh, I've seen artwork recently from Naughty Dog and they do the same general process for material sculpt before using substance. Well, you can't fault Naughty Dog. I love that studio. I'd love to work with them. They did, the Last of Us was an amazing game. I haven't played it, but I watched a Let's Play of it. Um, and their environment work is just beautiful. They make some beautiful, beautiful environment stuff. They really do. So if they're doing it the right, if they're doing it one way, then I, I would I would copy their way as well, Sniper Girl. Sniper Girl says, "Guess I'll just keep on getting people, keep on just letting people bitch from that uh, one Discord channel." Chiwatara says, do you use Udins? Uh, I have, I don't, I won't be for this project. 
Um, if you work in film, they use UDIMs quite a lot in film when you're doing a texturing work. Not, no, it's not so much in games. Games is generally not used. Film, it is used. Uh, depending on what the project is I'm working on, I will use UDIMs, but most of the time I don't. <laughs> Simply because most of the time I'm creating stuff that's being rendered in V-Ray that doesn't need UDIMs, and this model is going to be for sale, so it's not going to have UDIMs. So yeah, 50-50 uh, to Atara. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Uh, Android Lust says maybe they think you want uh, you went overboard on it, but in reality the sculpted welding looks better on something that wouldn't be machine welded in real life. I agree. And this is Android Lust saying, uh, I think machine welding is a thing. I'm, I'm no welder. I, I, I'm not either, but I think machine welding I think is a thing. Sniper Girl says, yeah, machine welding is a thing. Wanted thick welds to simulate slow welder. Okay. All right, so now that we've um, copied, we grouped this one up, we've got it all UV mapped the way we want it. We are going to duplicate it. I'm going to put it here where this one is. Uh, I am going to have to flip it. So just, just for the moment, I'm going to move it out so I can make sure when I do the flip, it is facing in the right direction. When I say flip, I mean mirror. You know what I mean. And now we can move it back into place. If you are a Max user and you do use the mirror tool like I've just done there, be aware that there's some bug in Max and it's been there for, for, since Max 2016 at least, uh, where it can mess up your UVs. So just keep that in mind. If your UVs get messed up, it's easy to fix, but it's a possibility if you're coming from, if, if you're using this uh, mirroring tool. I might just have to do this one by hand because of the um, the difference in height between the smaller and the larger one. I'm just going to have to rotate it around. No problem, Chiwatari. You pop that link into the um, into the Discord server. So yeah, I'm just going to rotate this one around by hand. So that we can get the uh, matching up correctly here with the step. Just so making sure it's sort of in the right spot, and okay, it is. And I'm going to delete the old one. And delete the old. Yeah, let me undo that. I think I grabbed the wrong one. The Sniper Girl says, I think they're yelling at me for sculpting out detail on the van, that they are, they'll yell even louder when I sculpt out foliage instead of doing it the standard way of doing it. Well, you do it however you want to do it, Sniper Girl. Bugger them all. They can, they can yell and scream and bitch as much as they want. It's your model. You do it the way you want to do it. I'm just trying to... Um, <laughs> Trying to see what's going on here. It's going to do a move. No, let's do an undo. Good. And it's wanted to see something so I can delete these. <laughs> Trying to work out what parts I can delete. <laughs> Why you do this? Undo. Uh, 
No, I don't want to do that. I do want to do that. You are working my last note. Uh, let me undo that. There's another one in here I want to delete. I'm just trying to select the right one. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to jump into isolation mode here. Okay. This is part of a group, so I need to ungroup it. This is what this is my problem here. Now I can select those two, jump back out of isolation mode, and delete them. And there we go. That's what I wanted. All right. Tiotara says, learned a lot about uh, high-res detail from his work. Uh, well, I'll check it out actually after the stream, Tiotara. Android Lost says, uh, I've seen some of Chris Costa's work. You want to be on his level? That's right. Edo, it's good to see you, Edo. How are you? Good to see you, Edo. I hope you're well. Cookie Smurfery says, <laughs> Okay, now now everything for this lower step section is textured. I know that because everything is white. <laughs> so what we have to do now though is we have to uh, group them all together so we can start um, duplicating it around to all of our different pieces here. So we don't have to re, re UV map stuff, we're just going to reuse this one. So let's do that. Um, I will be attaching all these pieces together as one mesh at the end, but not just yet. Edo says, yo, is your job looking for an American modeler? <laughs> Call me. <laughs> uh, not at the moment, not that I'm aware of, Edo. I don't, I don't actually have much to do with the hiring. That's all handled by HR and the directors make those choices at the studio. But I'll keep you in mind. I will keep you in mind if anything pops up. You and half a dozen other people that watch my stream. <laughs> Uh, Tuatara says, uh, yep, this, his work's quite amazing. Funny guy, talented artist. Yeah, Sniper Girl says, I asked first. Sniper Echo asked before you did Sniper Girl. Let's group these. Uh, I'm just going to do a quick move here to see, to make sure I grabbed everything I needed. And it looks like I forgot something. I can see it left behind there. I think it's this little thing here. So, so let's attach that to our group. Now we've got everything. Now we can start duplicating it around. Android Lost says to Tuatara, I actually believe I saw his work on Instagram first. Android Lost says to Edo, are you sure you want to more to hell for a job? <laughs> what do you mean? Are you suggesting that it would be hell to work with me? Is that what you're saying, Android Lust? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think you mean. I think you, you mean about like when they send me to those mines in the middle of the desert. Yeah, most people in the studio they they, they don't do that for them. It's only me and one other person generally that they send to those mines in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so most, most people that work at the studio don't get sent to the middle of nowhere like I do. To those 50 degree, 55 degree um, temperatures in the middle of the desert. I'm one of the lucky few that they send there.
Android <laughs> lost his hell, hell, hell prices over every year. <laughs> uh, so I'm just going to check to make sure that um, this is in the right spot. That looks good. Let's get rid of the old one. Again, I'm just going to remove all these pieces we don't need now because we I may, we have a copy. Good. I probably before I did this should have um, modeled the stairs up in ZBrush like I wanted, but it's going to be easy for us just to replace the stairs on these copies. Okay, that's good. Let's uh, copy around to the third one now. Pardon me. This head cold cough that I got, uh, uh, not good. Joe Tara says, can relate to that sort of job. Ended up in Tequila. I can't pronounce that one. <laughs> Let's copy this one. Let's rotate this one around so it's in the right, facing the right way. I'm going to line it up to the steps, not to the rest of this. And let's get rid of the old one. one over here okay that's uh, now I still have to copy them to our kit bash pieces here as well but just before I do that I just want to have a look here to see how we're going with our UV mapping on everything else so I'm just going to double check this one to see if it's UV mapped Yes, it is. So I'm just going to throw down that white texture. And now the steps. The steps, let's see if they're UV mapped. I think they are. Yes, they are. So let us assign that white texture to the step. Um, the columns, I'm not sure if they're UV mapped. I don't think they are. Let me have a look. They seem to be. I'm going to collapse the stack. Throw down an unwrap and I'm just going to apply the um, checker texture to make sure. Yep, that'll be fine. So let's assign the um, plain white texture to it now. 
And if that one is mapped, then that means all the rest of them should be as well. Okay, now let's just assign the white texture to them all. So many columns. Okay, and now did I texture, did I UV map these ones? Is the next question. I don't think I did. So let's um, let's do a quick save because we don't want to lose all the work we've done. I think we'll get most of this done today, and then when I come next week, um, we'll just the first thing we'll do is do the stairs. That's the last thing that'll be needed to be done for modelling in ZBrush and then we can jump straight into texturing. I'm pretty sure the rest of the model here is, most of it is UV mapped. Snappy Girl says when Phil reads the chat he'll probably be like what the fuck are they talking about? <laughs> Thank you for the safe reminder Phil, no problem Android Lust. Yes yeah, so I've, been, I've been ignoring the chat a little bit because I really wanted to get most of this done today. Because we want to start texturing. I want to start doing some of the texturing stuff in, in Substance Painter and Mari. Uh, there's a couple of things here I have to delete, like this step here, the green one. On its own. Nope. And the one over here, because we don't need that step there. There we go. All right. Uh, but we do want to texture up these decorative metal pieces, so let's send that over to Rhizom. And let us try... Let's try the first one first. Let's see what result we get from that. This, um, <coughs> pardon me, a cylindrical map inside of Max would probably work for this, to be honest. <coughs> In fact, that may be what I end up doing, I think. So I don't really like that result. Let's try the next one. We're getting, we're getting a lot of squishing, which is the blue, and a lot of stretching, which is the red. Unfortunately, I'll just do a repack here. Yeah, no, don't like that one either. Uh, we'll try this one. And this one's not looking too bad, I don't think. Sniper Girl says, guess he'll, hell does freeze over. Uh, we could get away with using this. We could also just use a cylindrical map inside of Max. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send it back using this one and we'll do a comparison. 
So I'm just going to isolate the selection. Just going to get rid of that. Um, I'm going to do an unwrap your VW, turn off uh, map seams. I'm going to assign the checkered material to this and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so that's, that's the checker material with that UV map. What we could do is we could do a UVW map, a straight um, cylindrical. We don't need to cap it. We just get it to fit. And I think that's actually probably a better fit than the, uh, the one that Ryzen created. So yeah, I'm going. I'm not going to use the one we the Ryzen made. I'm going to use just straight cylindrical mapping. It's it's a better fit for us. So I'm just going to collapse my stack. Um, the only thing I was thinking is it looks. We might be able to actually just adjust, let me get rid of that, just adjust it a little bit. By... I'm just pulling it down because I want my squares to be square and not rectangles, those, those checker pattern. Otherwise, when we when we come to texture it, the texture is going to be squished. It's going to look longer and not high enough. So I'm just reducing the size a little bit inside of the um, UV editor. Just going to pull it in as well to stay within our 0 to 1 space. And that's better. Now we have squares and not rectangles, black and white squares. Let's jump out of isolation mode. Um, just going to assign that plain white texture now. And we're just going to copy the unwrap. And we should be able to paste it in. Let me double check. Yes, that's fine. Mepri says, man, I wish I wasn't so awful, awful at math and knew what all these nodes and Unreal Material Editor did. You can look them up. They're all on their website, uh, uh, in the documentation on uh, Epic Games' website. But there are a lot of nodes, <laughs> half of which I haven't used myself inside of our UE4. Max has a lot of nodes too. The material editor in Max, it has quite a few nodes too that you can work with. Not as many as Unreal, but still a good selection in Max. And now we're back to the beginning, which is good. Okay, let's keep going. This one, did, yes, it looks like we did do UV mapping on this. Yes, we did. Let's assign it the plain color. This one we also UV map, so let's collapse the stack and assign a plain color. Which means we would have UV, UV mapped this one, I think. Yes, we did. So 
Play with this one. And that just leaves the little top piece here. Looks like we did uh, UV map it. I'm just going to check it with a checker pattern to make sure it's, it looks okay. That'll work for what we want. So let's assign the plain white colour. Alright, let's have a look here. I actually have to put something underneath of that fountain as well. <laughs> At the moment it's just floating in midair. Uh, but let's see if we've UV mapped these bits and pieces through here. Start with this one, it looks like we did. Yes, we did. And this one down here, we also did. Uh, but what I think I might do here is I might combine the top and the bottom together. So we use more texture space. So I'm going to attach that one to that one. And we're going to just repack it. Because at the moment they're overlapping each other, that's why you can't tell that there's two there. So we, we have better use of our texture space. Okay, and these. Looks like we did UV map them. I'm just going to double check. Yes, we did. Good. So let's assign that plain color to it. <laughs> Smepper says, I know what I want to accomplish, but not how to get to get it done. Uh, uh, it looks like these are, have not been um, UV mapped. Actually, it looks like they have been UV mapped, but they haven't been attached. So let's do that. I'm going to select them. Isolate them. Collapse our stack. I'm going to do an attach list because I don't want to select all of those one by one. Uh, they're not textured, so it should be fine. Okay, let's jump back out of isolation mode. Uh, they need to be UV mapped. Actually, let me just check the UV map on this. Okay. Yeah, I don't, don't think they've been UV mapped yet. So we need to do that. How are we going for time? Hmm, we're running out of time today. Let's do a quick save. I think we might leave it there for today, guys and girls. Wrong button. <laughs> Uh, I do want to thank you for watching though. Um, we, I didn't quite get it done, almost. You can see how much we've got left here. All I've got left to do is I need to copy the stairs around to the kit bash pieces uh, and then UV map the tops of those, um, probably the tops of these as well. Just a couple more UV mapping and the stairs in ZBrush and then we can start texturing. So we're nearly there, nearly done with the modeling stage anyway.
Yes, I know time is our worst enemy, and I, I get caught too caught up in stuff. <laughs> Thank you, you know, Chiotaro. I'm glad you like it. Uh, it should start to, to look better once we start texturing it up. It's a bit hard to to gauge how it's going to look at the moment with just white textures everywhere. Uh, but hopefully soon we will get a better idea when we start texturing it up. Which we will start to do next week. Like Monday next week when I'm back, uh, we'll finish off the UV mapping. And that means on Tuesday we should be able to start texturing. Famous last words. Uh, but I do want to thank you guys and girls for hanging out and watching. Uh, you, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Take care and I will see you all again on Monday next week. See you guys.